Hey, hopefully you heard last week's part one of my interview with Joe Reese. Joe is the host of the Monday Morning Data Engineering Podcast and the co-author of Data Engineering Fundamentals. Well, we talked for so long, we had to split it into two parts. It's just how it goes sometimes. So listen into part two today of me and Joe talking about data engineering and the inexorable march towards real-time analytics. I feel like we, the analytical world and the data world is really, for the most part, and again, not talking about big tech companies or companies that are operating where they need real time, but I think for the most part, people are we're still trying to catch up to do is doing batch analytics in, right. in, in, a, in, a, in a in a you know a useful way, and that's I feel like now that the tooling's there, whether the practices are there or not, I think is a different story, which I'm you know working on. But I feel like which is the, actually your work is really about helping lift the level of practice there. Yeah, that's exactly that's how it. I see your work anyway. Mm-hmm. That's what that's my goal is. I feel I feel like I feel like we don't have a shortage of great tools at this point. I feel like we have awesome tools, but I feel like our ability to realize those tools potential, you know, that we, we could probably do a better job at that, right? Yeah. There's a big gap. And so that's that's one thing I'm working on. But I feel like the next thing is is a live data stack. And I feel like what's happened now is, you know, now that we can get batch done pretty easily, and relatively easily, like the capabilities there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. the same thing's gonna happen with real time. And streaming, I guess real time okay. and streaming. I guess you know what. I'd love your 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 opinion on those two terms. I, I use them interchangeably, but I know that you know somebody is going to uh, nitpick the term and um, probably send me an nasty uh, email. Like you got yeah, this I, wrong. yeah, I will. I'll tweet something. You know, I'll, I'll well actually you on on Twitter because that's <laughs> well actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a productive way to have a conversation. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me let me just take that and I'm, I want I want to rewind I, in a minute. I want to answer that question, but then I want to rewind to the. ETL to uh, data engineering transition, like yeah, something happened there. And now this thing that you're talking about in the real time transition, I think there's a parallel, but let me first, <laughs> it's okay for you to interview me too. You know, it's you. you well, we do both do podcasts. I mean, I'm exa- exactly. I'm really I'm, good at turning the tables. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Here. I'm asking the questions here. So <laughs> I'll be asking the questions, man. <laughs> streaming, <laughs> streaming in real time. Um, yeah, kind of similar things, but I'll make I'll make distinctions that I can. Um, now, s- streaming in this sense, in the sense of a Kafka or a Pulsar or something like that, uh, I I see it as, uh, you, you know, I'll just give a couple different swings at the the pinata here. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, they're they're systems based on the fundamental abstraction of a, a log. Yep. Um, and it it matters that it's not a queue. We've had queue infrastructure for a long time. That's a different thing. Different. But it's a way of of remembering things that have happened. So you you store these immutable events in order um, and durably. And so now the the underlying data infrastructure is that we're going to log things that happen, and we'll come up with ways of reading them later, um, which is huh, another way to get the purists mad at you. Uh, sort of a, a <laughs> A backdoor way of, of describing CQRS, um, yeah. but you know I, I wouldn't actually say that because you know things would happen anyway. So yeah, so the, the, you set yourself up for a lot of hate mail, Tim. I know all this whole episode. <laughs> everybody, hopefully, we'll get some good good distribution. You know, links. Can you believe this idiot said? Yeah, I know. Listen to it. Um, so, um, yeah. So so streaming, I think, is is about logging and maybe a little bit more fundamentally. Um, the, the idea is, so I just made this point about how these logs are durable, but in terms of the, com- the computation that you're going to be doing, um, you don't put data in a place to go back to it when you want it. Um, in, a, in a database, whatever the database is, um, there's a, a place where a piece of mutable state lives and you, you go to it and ask it questions. It's, it's, it's very queryable. Um, and you actually need those. You, those, those have not gone away, but streaming systems, the idea is, uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to log it. I'm going to remember it. You can do stuff with it later. You can do other things with it later. But the idea is I, I don't want to put it somewhere until I figure out when I want to go back there and use it. I want to do something with it right now. Yep. So there is always the idea that there is a thing to do right now. And it, it didn't take off until because because that could be a queue, right? Yep. Um, it didn't take off until we combined those things of 
yes, uh, it's, it's, I got something I got to do right now. All my tools are going to be event driven things. And that's the shape of, of all the APIs and the other pieces of infrastructure and everything. Um, and I need to remember what these events are because I'm not the only one who's going to want to deal with them. There are going to be other things that, that need to touch them. So, um, I deal with it right now. I do my value added work on it right now, I think is the heart and soul of, of streaming. Yep. Uh, now that's streaming. You asked me about real time also. Um, <laughs> that's a toughie because my, my career started in, in embedded firmware and, um, there, there's a good definition of real time, which is just that part of the correct behavior of the software involves a latency. Like yep. an event happens and you have this many milliseconds to produce an output or whatever it is. Um, and in hard real time systems, taking longer is incorrect behavior. Um, that's tight. That's great. That's very objective. The way you, we, we, we use real time. It sounds like the marketing team is speaking through us. It's, it sounds like a, an aspirational thing or an idea it's, it's, it's very subjective, you know, so let me try to make it a little bit more objective. Um, when I talk about real time analytics, which is the subject of the podcast, um, uh, I mean, analytics, um, that can be in the user interaction loop. So yep. dashboards, which is the traditional subject and the traditional target of, of data engineering is you want to get stuff into a dashboard for people to look at 10 minutes is great. You know, I mean, old school, original ETL was next day and printed on paper. And and now we can do it for you in 10 minutes. That's, that's honestly, that's fine for most business analysts. That's, that's what they need. But if you're going to take that same data and package it and send it to the users of your app or service or whatever, now all of a sudden, you know, a hundred milliseconds is kind of a long time. Yep. So when I think of real time, I, I, I connect that to the user facingness of, and there are, you know, fine distinctions you can make there to, to cut that a little more precisely, but that's, that's how I look at it. It's an interesting one, right? Yeah. I mean, in, in my, um, you know, the work I do with Ternary, uh, my, um, I did engineering company. It's we've, we've heard requests for real time. We get requests for real time all the time. Right? Okay. Tell me and, about and, that. It's interesting. So sometimes, so we always ask, okay, so when you say real time, what, how frequently would you expect something? Right? Sometimes it might be sub-second. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be every hour. Yeah, it might be right. A day. It might be a day. So the, the longest we heard is every month. That's that was real time. real time to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very subjective. Right? Very subjective. I'm actually talking about this in my course right now. Uh, it's like when, that, when, somebody asks, when somebody says real time, which they will, you should ask them what they mean by this, because that that is a very loaded term. Mm -hmm. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Then the second question that I always ask is, okay, so say you want this data immediately. I mean, if, if given the choice, I think most people would want data immediately. Why would I want to wait? Right. Of I, if I, I want, I want instant gratification. Um, okay. So that my question always is, okay, so what action would you take with this if you were to get data, say in ten minutes, or mm -hmm. in ten seconds, mm -hmm. or in ten milliseconds? What, what, how would this change what you do? Right. Yeah, there needs to so, be an answer because you're paying for it. Okay, if you're, you're, you're buying it. that latency, you're buying the latency. And here's the other thing: I, I realized I was, at, I was at an IoT company, and uh, we we got requests from you know a lot of big, a lot of customers, or you know a lot of the big tech companies you you know of. Um, and people are like, okay, so I want, I want real time. Uh, Reports. I was like, well, my team were like, okay, this is interesting. What are they going to do with this? Right? If I were to give you data, are you going to just stare at a dashboard all the time as it updates every second? Is that really worth your time? Yeah. I was like, just tell me what, what if you looked at this data, like what action are you going to take on it? I was like, well, why don't we just automate the action you're going to take? And we'll just give you a report about what we just did. There you go. Like later. Like this. There you go. This is how it should work. <laughs> so the, the notion of real time dashboards is a, it's a funny one. And the, but the, you see these, you hear this term a lot, real time dashboard. But the, uh -huh. the question I always have is okay, so are you, gonna, are you literally going to stare at it? If I, if I did the data every, every nanosecond, say, are, are you really going to just look at this thing uh -huh. and look for trends? Uh -huh. or deviations and and look look at the wiggles and learn what the wiggles are supposed to right. do and when they do the wiggle in a different way then you you press a button it's it's um yeah. i don't know if you've ever seen the movie brazil uh i remember that movie Terry yep. gilliam yeah there's movie. it's dystopian thing and there's there's all these little black and white screens with 
Fresnel lenses in front of them to magnify them. And, and they're kind of all over the place. And that's, that's, I picture either that or some kind of matrix like dystopia where you're jacked into, you know, all of your, your dashboards and, and your, your brain is trained to be the anomaly detector. If that's the best we can do at some point, fine. But uh, you know, I think we can do better. Like you said, automate anomaly detection. Well, it's funny because when you when you look at old uh, movies from the uh, '90s about hackers, right? It's always like the screen with like the uh, like like some some terminal and it's moving really yeah. fast. Yeah, and then you <laughs> look at it, and you're like, oh, that's that's oh, that's sixty five hundred two assembly language. Interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna stare at it uh, yeah. as it moves. Um, but no, this is. But I, I think it's just one of those things where I think the um, this is sort of the misnomer that hopefully you know people like us can educate um, users on is really you know at a certain point what what's worth automating. Right, and what's worth uh, you know, throwing either heuristics or maybe machine learning at? Because uh, I think because data is at, at such a scale now where it's impossible to, uh, uh, I, I would say, analyze everything that quickly, and the volume of data is appearing, and the velocity is appearing. But the interesting thing is, that we, as we call that in the, in the book too, with the live data stack, is real time analytics. I, I think real time analytics is the next shooter drop. Right, we, we gotten good at batch analytics. I don't think that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Real time though means okay, so. If I can take automated actions on what or when or where type questions, right? So descriptive. So if this frees up the analysts to really focus on causal um, analytics, right? What, what are the why and the, and the hows of my business? I, mean, I think that's where the domain expertise is is really, um, you know, more more used. I don't need. To, I mean, I don't need you to tell me like, hey, how many sales did I make yesterday? Like that, that's, that's an easy question. I can make a dashboard of that. I've always, I've always, for the last several decades, I've had that capability to do that. That's not an interesting question. Um, and with large language models, I'm pretty sure that'll just become pretty table stakes to, to, to interface with, right? Mm-hmm. I think the more interesting in, questions in are definitely yeah. in English. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, not in or the, the language that um, you, whatever the language is that you speak. Esperanto. Speak. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope there's an Esperanto uh, in, embedding. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think that's where it's going, you know, and I think it's going to change the nature of what analysts do, um, you know, just because of everything. And the other thing is the feedback loop between application, um, you know, quote data crunching for, you know, using, you know, uh, real-time engines, um, you know, like Star Trek and so forth. And then, you know, machine learning use cases. But this feedback loop is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, because as, as the latency between use cases shrinks, uh, you know, what, what I see happening is... Um, you know, these, these worlds of application, quote, data and machine learning, they, they sort of gel into something different. I'm not sure what that looks like, but I, you do see this happening. Maybe if you use Uber, for example, I mean, that's a, that's basically a giant data application, a real-time data application, and it works very, very well. Um, it would suck if it didn't work really, really well. Or it didn't work <laughs> in real time because I would have no idea where my ride's at. And um, this is, this is uh, uh, I suppose, why they are significant Pino contributors and have members on bingo. the Pino right. Project Management yeah. Committee. And it's, yeah, yeah. Or if, I'm, if it's 3 a.m. and I'm ordering DoorDash after I get home from a club or something, then I, you know, I want to make thing. sure my food shows up before I pass out. Um, you do. <laughs> so, you, do. you know, that happens. Um, it's just stuff like that. You know, that's, that's the magic of... Uh, streaming and I, but I think that's I think that's where we're going um, so the the 3 a.m line would be a great line to end on but I want <laughs> I want to ask you one more question I want I want to I want to rewind because there's something that you started to talk Joe, about what do you order at 3 a.m what do you what do you, you like high fat high protein you know no, um there's a place we started to go earlier and I just had a bookmark in my head and I I want to I want to get there before we're done so um, there was this so I'll say in the 80s um, when uh, Bill Inman began this idea of let's go get all the stuff and move it to here and we'll ask questions of it here. Um, and there was a whole set of tooling and, and disciplines and ideas and then specific implementations and consultancies and publishing empires and blah, 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 uh, <laughs> product lines. I mean, it was, it was a industry transformative idea, right? Get the stuff here, bring it here, ask it questions here. Mm-hmm. Now, in a sense that, that, idea of get the stuff out here, bring it here, ask it questions here, also describes the data engineering, data science paradigm that yeah. you described, mm-hmm. but they're not the same. Okay. Data engineering isn't ETL. And I, I would never say, I would never, you know, say, oh, they're really the same. So what do you think happened in that transition? Did, did we just want like a, a cooler name or, 
what's going on in the world that causes us to start to think of that differently and use those different tool sets? I think we kind of touched on this, but I, I, I wonder. Are if you talking you, about uh, from the uh, perspective of, of uh, why data engineers are data engineers, or yeah, why are they not uh, just ETL developers? I mean, I think to a large extent they are right, but it, but this naming conventions do what they do with job titles. Uh, which is uh, as you're trying to attract candidates, you want to get the the cooler job title and not the uh, um, the hair shirt. So, ETL developer is more of the hair shirt uh, version of it, but I think it still has a very accurate title for what a lot of people do functionally, right? But I sure I think if you were to, to say, hey, would you like a would you like to get an ETL developer job? People would be like, yeah, um, yeah, I don't. I but don't you think just. So. It's that's just sounds sounds old fashioned now, but you see it's, just an evolution of tooling and this sort of pivot towards Kafka taking over a lot of those pipelines. Like, what's going on there? It's an interesting one, right? I think it, it's it's kind of like um, you know back in the day. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, Camaros are pretty cool back in the day. If you remember those? Yeah. The, now they're the retro cars. cool. Now the retro cool, right? But the same doesn't really apply to job titles. Like I'm not going to get an ETL developer job because I want a yeah. retro uh, title. I'm not going to get a hotmail email address because I want a retro email. Actually, I might actually be kind of fun. Um, but you kind of get the idea. Um, yeah. So data engineers become this all-encompassing term, just like data science has. I mean, data science yeah. used to be very, I, I think, very applied to machine learning. Um, I mean, when I got into it, that's what a data scientist was. If you weren't doing machine learning, you were kind of like, I mean, you got to remember back in the day, analysts, if you had the word analyst in your title, you were like a second class citizen mm-hmm. in, the, in the data world. It's like, you know, you, you may as well just go, you know, go to the other lunch yeah, table with the other nerds. What, what, and, what would you say you do here territory? Yeah, uh, exactly. It's like, yeah, what, what, so what would you say you do here? Um, yeah, good with it's people. like, well, I'm good with people. Yeah. Um, but that's yeah, but 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 I think that what happened was, um, you know, just job titles. It's it's just creep. It's just a it's a title creep is what happens. And so, because data engineering, I mean, there's a lot of facets to it. I would say it's more multifaceted than quote data science. In the sense, there's there's just so many technologies that you got to keep track of. And you know, when I talk to seasoned data engineers, like guys who'd been in the in the scene, you know, contributing to Hadoop back in the day, and some cases, you know, it's core developers and stuff. And in, in that era, I mean, they read my book and they're just like, holy crap, there's so much to learn. Like back in the day, you just had to know a few things. Now, I don't even know how you'd know all this stuff. Right. Right. And I, just, I, I didn't even go that deep on a lot of things in the book. That's the problem. It's like, that was by design. It would have been a 4,000 page book if you went deep on every topic or probably more. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff you got to know, right? You got to know the paradigms in batch. You got to know paradigms in streaming. You got to know paradigms in storage. All this stuff, right? And and how do they interface with the upstream systems? How do you provide it in a way that's useful for downstream systems? I mean, there's a lot to know, um, it, you know. But all these used to be different titles, right? I mean, the streaming engineer. I mean, that's a job title at probably bigger tech companies because that's what you're doing all day. Mm-hmm. If you're at Netflix, I mean, I don't think maybe they have data engineers as a title. I don't know. Um, uh, but you know, streaming is probably what you're focusing on you know, if you're going to be doing streaming stuff and. and um, so I think it just depends on where you're working too. I think at, at Google, from what I heard, like they didn't even use the term data engineer for a long time. You're just a software engineer. Um, that wasn't really, uh, maybe they do now, but I think okay. back in the day, from what I understand, that was from what I heard. Yeah. It's, if anyone from Google wants to, you know, uh, chime in on correct that or correct me, yeah. please do. Yeah. I mean, that'd be great to know. But from what I heard, that was, um, it was interesting when I was talking to Jordan Tagani, actually, uh, he came up with a, he was a founding engineer for BigQuery. When he was trying, he was telling me when he was trying to get people to work on BigQuery at Google, um, you couldn't tell people that are working on a data warehouse because they would just like they run away. Why would I want to do that? Yeah, yeah no, this like, is a big so data database. Yeah, this is lame. Um, you know, but now it's funny because I think um, at least for a moment, BigQuery was being positioned as a uh, data warehousing tool. So it's it's just funny to see how diff- you know just the functionally you're doing the same job, just whatever you call it. It just it, you know, depends on what's fashionable at the time. Yeah. So what happened with data engineering? I just think that. Um, it grew to encompass a lot of different roles, you know, and that's, it's kind of what happened because you have analytics engineers as well. And those are, you know, it's, a, it's maybe a subset of data engineering. So it's, it's a, it's a good question, Tim. And I, I don't know that I have a good answer except for the one I gave you, which is probably a, um, a satisfactory answer, but not a great one. I'm satisfied. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> so that's great. Uh, but it's, the titles are a weird one, right? And we actually wrote in the book too, that we feel like the, t- the t- title data engineer it has a chance of going away at some point. I mean, I, I think. Uh, oh, they usually do. They they they, they morph do. into other things. The responsibilities change. The tools change. 
uh, the world moves on. And it, it seems like, you know, you've described this commoditization of the, the static or the batch tools. Yep. And now there's a focus on this march towards real time. Yep. Um, and, and that's where there's growth edges and lots of value being created and lots of non-commodity things. And, you know, maybe in 15 or 20 years, that will be old hat and we'll have some, some other new thing. Well, the interesting thing I, I think that kind of came out of left field is the, um, you know, all the attention on AI, hmm. right? I don't think in 2022, early 2022, you wouldn't have had the prediction that by the end of the year, everyone would have been focused on uh, AI use cases. I think I wrote right. about this last week in my newsletter, but it was, um, you know, I think if, if chat GPT hadn't, hadn't happened, we'd still be talking about, you know, you know, kind of things we're t- talking about, like modern data stack, streaming, uh, you know, how that's evolving and then analytics and data mesh and all these other things, but then ChatGPT comes out and now all of a sudden it's large language models and that's just about Everywhere, it. So, yeah. you know, so the questions I've been having, I've uh, been thinking about is so, so what's the intersection of a uh, streaming and, you know, all the tooling to support large language models and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so it's, it's what's been on my mind lately. I don't really have an answer yet, but. You will. Confident I will. that. You'll at least have it. You'll have a perspective. <laughs> it it seems guess- like this in- unavoidable, uh, gravitational pull though right oh yeah no it's 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 gonna it's gonna be with us for a while yeah my guest today has been joe reese joe thanks for being a part of the real-time analytics podcast anytime anytime thank you tim and there you have it if you feel compelled to help us spread the word and grow the real-time analytics community you can give us a rating on spotify or apple podcasts or wherever fine podcasts are sold if you're watching us on youtube hey subscribe and of course hit that notification bell And you can always share your favorite episodes on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever it is you do social media. Thanks, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode. 